Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be creating a Vox inspired timeline animation inside of DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. So to get started, first things first, we need to have some images. I got these images online and I'll be using these assets to create this animation. So let's start with the image. I'm going to drag and drop it to the flow. And if you take a look at it, this is the image that I'll be using. So we want to mask this image out. Just select this media in. You can also rename this if you want to. And now we'll just add in an ellipse mask to this. Now, the next thing we want to create a border around this mask, a black border. So for that, we will take a background node and connect it to this image one. This will result in a merge. Take a look at it and you can see the background is in front. We'll hit a control T on the keyboard to swap the inputs so that the background is in the background. Now we will also add an ellipse mask to this background. And now what I want to do is I want to connect these two ellipses together. To do that, we will go to ellipse one and we want to link width and the height. So right click on the width expression. Now just simply click and hold and just pick this height slider. Now both these properties are connected, the width and the height. So if I change the height, the width will also change. And now on the second ellipse, we want to connect the width to the height. So right click again, expression, connect the width to the height. And now we want to connect the height to the ellipse one height over here. All right, ellipse one height. So let's go to ellipse two height expression. And we can type in ellipse one dot height. Hit enter, you'll see there is no border around the image. But now we can multiply this. So if you add the star symbol, then hit 1.05 or any other value that you want to put just type that in and now you can see the border around the image so now if i make changes to the main ellipse over here you can also rename this you can change the ellipse size over here and you can see that it will change the size of the both ellipses for you and also retaining the border width so i'm going to set this to 0.4 and now the next thing we want to create a transition from this masked image to the full bleed of this image so for that i will copy this image again copy and paste it down below and connect it to this merge one this will result in merge two take a look at it and now in the merge two we can use the blend slider to switch from this masked image to this full bleed image the next step is the text so let's just drag that in connect that this will result in merge three take a look at it and in the text field you can just start typing anything that you want i'm going to type in the year and also i'm going to change the font let's make it black and change the color to black as well for the time being let's go to merge to and set the blend to zero so that we can see this image in this mask and now with the text selected i can just move it down like so and also increase the size something like this and kind of move it over here just add some gap between these two now i'm going to do the same thing with my other image so i can copy this and paste it over here and i'll just replace the image over here so go to media pool i have the second image over here drag and drop it on the image node and this will ask you to replace it i'll click on ok and do the same thing over here with the other image node so if you take a look at it this is how it is going to look now for the text i'm actually going to remove this and I can copy this text one node, control C, and paste it as an instance, control shift V. And now I can connect this to the merge over here. So now all of these properties are linked between these two text nodes, except the text field. So we'll just right click, click on the instance. So now we can change these two independently, the text itself. But rest of the properties, such as the size, tracking, color, even the font, they're all linked. So if you change one, the other will be changed as well. So you can also group these, group this and this. And you can also rename the group. So let's just call this and you can merge these two together like so. This will result in a merge. Let's just keep this in the middle for now. You can see the first image is at the top. And if I go to merge four and move it to the right, let's view this. Uh, it's moving the very first image. We want to move the second image, which is A2, the asset two. So again, click on the merge four and control T. This will swap the inputs and now it will the merge four will control the second image over here and we want to set this to the center x to 
Now, the next thing is uh, we want to create a little timeline indicator at the bottom. So let's just do that. Add in a background, take a look at it. And by the way, I have also enabled the guides. If you right click guides, I have enabled the guides over here. There's a shortcut key for this as well. Just enable that and we'll help you align things in the middle. For the color, we will use this color over here. And I will just add in a mask to this. Increase the width and reduce the height. Actually, I'm going to set this to 0 0.012. And after this rectangle, I'm going to copy and paste it. This will be our second rectangle. I'm going to change the width and I'm going to increase the height. So I want to create this little indicator like so. And then I'm going to change its position. I'm actually going to increase the width a little bit. So now we can merge these two together, the, the indicator and our assets at the top. Let's connect the background to this merge and so result in another merge. Take a look at it and you can see all of the assets are merged. Go to merge five and change the position of the indicator over here. I'm going to put it under the text over here. But as you can see, we're not able to tell where the text is. So we can, after the merge five, add in a transform XF. This is a shortcut for transform at that and take a look at this transform node and reduce the size so we can see where the text ends and then I'm going to reduce it even more and then in the merge 5 I can just position it like so now let's use this transform to create our animation so let's go to frame 10 over here and I'm going to create a keyframe on size I'm going to reset the size to 1 let's go to frame 40 and I'm going to reduce the size till I see the bar at the bottom as well Right, so I'm going to set this to 0.67. Then let's move forward to frame 90. Create a keyframe on center X and Y. And then let's go to frame 120 and change the center X. And I'm going to set this to something like 0, negative 0 0.175. Right? So that the image is in the center. But now at the bottom you can see that we do lose the time indicator. But we can fix this if you go to merge 5 and set the edges to wrap. Uh, we can see the next indicator is going to be right there under the image. But it will also add this indicator at the top. You can easily fix this by adding a mask to this merge 5. And just simply extend the length of the mask and put it on top of your time indicator, which is at the bottom over here. So it'll have something like this let me just remove the guide so that you can see it clearly so in an animation like this right so if it's getting cropped up you just extend it even more the next thing is we want to uh, transition from a full bleed image to this uh, masked image so let's go to our asset one because this is our image one and we have this merge two over here which is connected to this image can also rename this so that we can differentiate it from other merge nodes and then i'm going to create this animation at frame 10. so create a keyframe on blend and let's go a couple of frames forward so maybe maybe frame 15 and set the blend to um well actually we have to reverse this so at frame 10 the blend should be at one and then we have to go to frame 15 and set the blend to zero so we'll have an animation like this Great. Right now, let's create our background. I'm going to close out of this group. And to create a background, it's pretty simple. Just add in a background node. I'm actually going to move this over here. And the background node. And let's add this to the transform. And for the background, we'll just use this color over here. After this background, add in a grid to this. Type in grid. And click on this grid. So you can see that even if I click, it, it does not work. You have to double click on it and now you'll be able to apply it onto this background and for the color let's just uh, let's actually use the same color but now we'll just make it dark so we just have to pull the slider down a little like so for the major line spacing we'll set that to zero and that should be it that's our graded grid background now in the original animation the grid is not perfect some parts are erased so for that we have to actually use fast noise yeah so add in a fast noise and connect it to this merge 
this will result in another merge take a look at it and this is how it's going to look um, so in the fast noise we can change the uh, detail and you know try and get rid of uh, some of these lines right so we can change the size and you can even uncheck discontinuous you can also try and uh, try playing with different blend modes over here so uh, if i cycle through these different blend modes i might get a different results out of it so yeah go ahead and definitely play around with that but i'm going to set this to normal for now then the next thing what i want to do is i want to create a little um, mask in the middle so i'll use an ellipse mask for this we have to connect this ellipse mask to the grid over here um, and you can just sort of increase this a little right so that looks great now if you take a look at this final merge over here your animation kind of disappears but you have to again select that node hit control t on the keyboard and then you should be able to see it if not then it's in the merge tool here go back control t again and now you'll be able to see your assets over here so again every time if you're not able to see your assets or maybe text or something like that make sure the inputs are correct because they really matter so you can see that this one is foreground this one's background and whatever is in the foreground is visible to your eyes so there you have it that's how easy it is to create this transition or this animation and after that we will add in a stop motion to this and i'm just going to set this to three and we have this really cool walk styled animation finally you just connect it to this media out and you will be able to render out this animation so yeah that is pretty much it this video is helpful don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one